Now stay with the fan for this special program. The Brewers game is over, and now the longest running post game in Milwaukee is on the air. This is the Fan Baseball Post Game Show, presented by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. Now, along with Steve Sparky Pfeiffer, here's Tim Allen on Sports Radio 1057 FM, The Fan. It is a final from Miller Park, and the results are good, but uh, a close call there in the ninth inning. Welcome, everybody. It is the Fan Baseball Post Game Show built by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. My name is Tim Allen. There's Bill Schmidt, Giddings, behind the glass, and an in studio guest here today. Dan Zielinski of the thirdmanin.com as uh, the Brewers get a 5-4 victory and boy oh boy uh, a close one and and as we've discussed over the weekend man if the Reds have done nothing else in the last I don't know I'm just off the top of my head four five six years these guys battle late in games they just do I don't know what they're what they're fixing down there in Cincinnati we're bringing Dan Zielinski and have a uh, conversation with him get his thoughts on the big leaguers he's uh He's a uh, a draft expert, and with the draft coming up June 9th, we'll uh, have him in studio today just kind of uh, chiming in and giving us some uh, pretty valuable information as the rebuild, yes, I said it, uh, is in progress here. But if, if you look at Jonathan VR, and I'll, I'll have you answer this, is there any chance, looking at the Brewers' uh, minor league organization here as a whole, mm-hmm. Is there a chance that – now, it's a good problem to have, to have good players in, in a log jam. Don't, don't get me wrong. But is there a chance that he's a second baseman here and Arcia is your shortstop? Yeah, I think you could expect him to play second or third base uh, once Arcia does come up. I think he's a great utility get, guy to have on the roster because he can play At so the many very positions. least. And, I mean, even he can play outfield in emergency. So I think he's a good pos- – position player who has the capability to play in second and third base uh jonathan vr uh mvp yeah no what uh i would say right now he has to be um top of the lineup bat he has hitting over 300 playing solid defense sure he's Mm -hmm. making a few mistakes on the base pads but overall i think he's been a pleasant surprise for this brewers team that many people didn't have too high of expectations coming into the no. season. No, well, we didn't know about him, and that's the thing. I mean, we didn't, we didn't really weren't aware of him. So that, that's, that's a good, good surprise. All right. So you have Orlando Arcia going to man th- uh, shortstop uh, at some point, and whether or not that's later on this year, I would assume it's in September. That would be my mm-hmm. guess, um, because you know what? What's the point here? Let him do his thing, and, and I may be wrong if there's an injury or something, but I, I would suspect that he comes up on the September 1st call-ups and they stay according to plan, whatever their plan is, whatever their timeline is. Um, but we, we talked uh, a little while ago about potentially VR playing second base. Now, they did acquire Isan Diaz mm-hmm. uh, in the uh, Segura deal, so there are some options there. Uh, third base, I don't think so, because somebody made up this rule that says, no, you can't do that. Third base got to be a power guy. The first base, they better be power guy. I hate no. whoever that was, by the I, way. I know that. Whoever said that, I, I don't like it. It's like if, you're, if you've got a stacked outfield or you have a shortstop that hits for power or a second, can't you then afford a non-conventional third baseman? <laughs> Who cares where you get Make your it up power? amateur draft time? And we were looking at the uh, – one of the publications the other day and a um, guy by the name of Corey Ray was on the cover. Is that a possibility? According to Dan Zelensky, is that a possibility now? I think it is. Um, he can play all three outfield positions, top of the order, a bat, real athletic, also has some pop as well in his, his uh, bat. So I think he is a possibility uh, for the Brewers at number five. Okay, so... Is is it possible that they're maybe looking at a pitcher? I know Puck down there from Florida. Mm-hmm. I believe he's a big left-hander. Uh, he, he's probably targeted targeted as the number one. I would think, right? Correct. Uh, six foot seven, two hundred and thirty pound left-handed pitcher. He seems like he's <laughs> going to be uh, the number one overall pick by the Phillies, just because he's he's that size. He's also a college pitcher, and teams are sometimes skittish uh, to take that high school pitcher towards the top of the first round. 
Well, they are. But but when you get a six seven lefty Gasson, I mean that's the that's the time to do that. Uh, I agree with you. High school pitchers are are a little bit of a question mark. Uh, but however, uh, position players, I think you have a little more clarity on position players. Do you not? Yeah, I totally agree with that. Um, you could see at least one high school position player drafted in the top five, maybe two. They're just a little bit easier to project. Also they can go through the minor league system a little quicker than maybe a high school pitcher will. All right, we'll talk more. Um, We'll hear from Craig Council coming up in just a little while. Uh, Just real quick, um, not that these guys are top five or or top ten or whatever. There's a catcher in state, a catcher out of Verona uh, that I was reading about the other day. How how high does he go since he's a, a home state guy? I think he could find a way to go in the second round. I don't see him... Uh, getting into the first round just because there's uh, some other college catchers who teams seem to prefer also just because of the ability to see them a little more since they've played at college so I think he could be a guy you see go in the second round yeah I tell you what parents groom your kids if 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 they don't have a lefty arm and and gassing hard groom your kids to be a catcher it's it's just a (laughs) it's your quickest path man to playing uh, college baseball it really is catchers are in demand at every level they they are all right so there's a what's this guy's name uh roar ben Rovited. yeah something like that i it's hard to pronounce his name but yeah out of verona Correct. wisconsin just outside of madison there's also down in kenosha and uh, a much higher mm-hmm. choice uh gavin lux out of indian trail uh now he's projected I, again, I'm not going to tell you top five or six, so the Brewers are not going to not going to grab him. But um, he's projected in the first round. However, correct, he's kind of moved up uh, throughout this uh, season he's had so far. He's displayed a lot of uh, pop in his bat. He's got kind of a strong arm, I guess, if you want to consider it. He was considered to be maybe a second round baseman. Um, at the next level, but he's kind of moved over to shortstop and mm-hmm. is what teams are going to kind of consider him as. Uh, he's gone from probably being top five-round pick to now being probably a legitimate first-round pick, probably in the 20s range, to a team maybe like the Padres who have a couple picks later in the second round. Or the- you know what? If he slips, do you see the Brewers taking another middle infielder? If he would slip to the second round, I could see that as a possibility because of okay. the skills he brings right. to the table. All right, Dan, we'll, we'll take a break here. We'll continue our conversation throughout the show today as the Brewers get a 5-4 victory today. Uh, Dan Zielinski, the third man in dot com. Uh, periodically throughout the show, we've been talking about the uh, 2016 amateur draft. And, and the Brewers, I, I don't know if uh, historically there is a more important draft than is going on next month, just in a couple of weeks, June 9th. And I'll tell you why I say that, because they have pointed to the rebuild themselves. Normally, the, t- the team would be doing their thing, and this is what we drafted, and Cody Medeiros, and, and all these guys. Um, but now, because you're rebuilding, restructuring, and doing all this thing, the, the, the draft here this year is paramount. If, if that's the way you're going to build this thing, and you point to the Chicago Cubs and Bryant and Schwarber and all these guys, if you point over there and you're saying that you're going to build it that way, then this focus is the biggest in franchise history, more so than, than anything else and any other year. Dan, would you agree with that? I would agree with you on that. The Brewers are in a crucial situation here with the rebuild, with the teams they have in their division, with Pittsburgh, St. Louis, the Cubs. They need to get good, and they need to build within uh, – through their farm system. Okay, well, and that being said, there's just more focus on it. That's <laughs> that was my point, and and we all want, you know, every year the Brewers to do well in the draft, and and they've done, had some successes. That's that's for sure. But when when you look at the the transparency of this rebuild, which is was an edict from the Brewers, I think you look at this draft as the most important draft, or at least the most focused draft that this organization has ever had ever had since 1970 in Milwaukee Um, that being said so we went over a couple of different players here as the Brewers are in the five spot in this year's draft 
who else might we see the Brewers select? Because we don't really know for sure. We do. We just see. It. First of all, Dan, let me ask you this: Is mm-hmm. this a talent-rich draft? Um, no, it is not. Um, well, it in other years it's about the same kind of talent. Uh, there's a lot of great high school pitchers in this class, which kind of makes it hard to predict. Um, there's not that Bryce Harper, Steven Strasburg type player in this draft. There's a lot of good players. There's just not that superstar guy who's going to go number one right now. Okay. Okay. So what are another couple of names that w- wouldn't surprise you that the Brewers, uh, with the 2016 fifth pick and the uh, amateur draft, the Brewers select? I think it could be Jason Groom or Riley Pint. Uh, Jason Groom is a prep left-handed pitcher uh, from New Jersey, and Riley Pint is a right-handed prep pitcher from Kansas. Hold on. The, the, the lefty outies, is that the kid that transferred from down south and then he was – disqualified to pitch that's correct. Is that, that kid correct. It, that that is that kid mm-hmm. okay read about him in usa today that uh and i didn't even realize that he was really projected that high really mm-hmm. yeah he's actually the best player in this draft but with teams being skittish to select high school pitchers towards the top of the draft he's kind of been falling down draft boards uh, over the last month or two, teams just want to take maybe a, a safer pick with a high school or with a college pitcher instead yep. of that high school uh, pitcher. That's uh, that's interesting. I if I'm not mistaken, you correct me if I'm wrong, Dan. Didn't he have a no hitter taken away from him? He did. He had a no hitter, and then he got suspended for a month, and all of his stats were vacated. Now again, that, I don't know his. This this would be for another conversation but I think high school sports are taken way too seriously <laughs> I, I do I, I do and and I don't know what his personal situation is but good gosh do you really believe he went to that high school maybe he did probably not do you really think that this guy transferred from where Florida Georgia or something like that went up to New Jersey because he wanted to get spotlighted at a particular high school I seriously doubt that mm-hmm. the situation was that his sophomore year, he pitched at new his New Jersey high school. Then his uh, junior year, he went down to Florida, uh, pitched, and then he came back. Now to the that same, I could see. Okay, the same fair high enough, school Dan. didn't move uh, addresses at all, so that's why he was suspended because he okay. didn't move and he didn't sit out uh, the beginning of the season. Okay, what I'm defending in, uh, him on mm-hmm. is what I'll what I'll point my finger at. The same deal. I think he went down to Florida to get spotlighted. Exactly. I totally Okay, agree. okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. So he, there is a little yeah. flim-flam going on there with this guy. And Okay, fair enough. Then he gets suspended. Uh, uh, so you got the left-hander. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? I Josh th- Hader and then another high-end left-hander? Mm-hmm. Yeah, he is the top pitcher in this draft, has the best stuff to be a top-of-the-line a starter, clean delivery, uh, mid-90s fastball, devastating curveball, outstanding command. Uh, he is the top pitcher in this draft class. Wow. Wouldn't that be nice? Josh Hader coming along. Now to two hard-throwing lefties in the rotation in 2018-19. Wouldn't that be nice? That'd be cool.